transgender players banned from international women's cricket by ICC. You know, there is a very, very simple solution to this issue. I presented it multiple times talking about this very topic in previous videos. If you haven't seen it before, stick around and I'll mention it again towards the end. The International Cricket Council has become the latest sports body to ban transgender players from elite women's game if they have gone through male puberty. The ICC said it had taken the decision following an extensive scientific review and nine-month consultation to protect the integrity of the international women's game and the safety of players. Now, for my American and Canadian brothers and sisters and in other parts of the world who are asking, what the hell is cricket? Well, as Raphael said in the very first Ninja Turtles movie, you got to know what a crumpet is before you understand cricket. If you are suffering from insomnia, might I suggest taking a dose of test match cricket? It'll be sorted out like that. And oh boy, did I just lose a whole bunch of Australian fans. I'm sorry. I find the game very boring. Now, when you watch it, you would sit there and think to yourself, really, how would men have an advantage over women in this game? Well, You've got to hurl a very rock-hard ball at high speed at your opposing player, kind of like baseball. Um, and unfortunately, people have died playing this game. Yeah, a cricket ball hit a bloke in his head and it killed him. So I understand why not wanting to have a man throw that ball at a woman is up there as a concern. It joins rugby union, swimming, cycling, athletics and rugby league who have all gone down a similar path in recent years after citing concerns over fairness and safety. This is a good thing, ladies. This is a good thing. Protect your sport. I know I read a report from Rebel News that in Canada, a man was playing against women in a rugby union match. And for some reason, all the ladies came out to support him. Why? And this is coming from somebody who is a big rugby league fan. The women's rugby league game here in Australia is fantastic. I want to see it grow. I want to see it thrive. And I want to see it become profitable so it becomes an actual career path for women who want to play the game. Explaining the sports decision, the ICC chef Jeff Allardyce said the changes to the gender eligibility regulations resulted from an extensive consultation process and is founded in science and aligned with core principles developed during a review. Inclusivity is incredibly important to us as a sport, but our priority was to protect the integrity of the international women's game and the safety of players, meaning they've seen what's been happening in other games and other sports around the world and seen the backlash. And the safety, because they're seeing women get hurt by men. The new policy comes just two months after a man decided that he wants to play against women in a T20 fixture. Under the ICC's previous regulations, which were based on reducing testosterone levels, uh, McGee had satisfied all of the eligibility criteria. However, the ICC said that its new rules would be based on the following principles in order of priority, protection of the... which they have mentioned before. So what, what that means is before... Any man could grow up a man and then suddenly decide that he wants to be a woman and compete in women's sport. It's that meme from South Park, the strong woman meme. Go watch that episode. It's fantastic. Which wasn't fair because they all developed as men, built the, uh, the, the manly muscle and the manly bone structure, and then they were going out and beating the crap out of women in different various sports. So just reducing your testosterone doesn't do anything. What they're doing now is saying that, look, if you don't go through male puberty, meaning that you were um, abused as a child by being put on hormone blockers, then you can play. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Meanwhile, the Football Association is working to find a resolution after a transgender player quit football due to rival codes refusing to play against her. This is that backlash that they were saying, talking about um, protecting the international game because women finally are starting to stick up for themselves. They're saying, we're not going to play against men. Hell, they did it in pool. And even with pool, I could be bent on saying, yeah, men and women would be equal in pool. But even a pool player decided, yeah, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to play against a man. This is a good thing, ladies. Only you can stuff these things up now because you want to be diverse and inclusive. Now, 
I'm not going to read the rest of the article because I've gone through this sort of stuff before. The solution to the problem is very simple. Three categories. Men, women, and whatever you want to call it. Diverse category. If there is so much support for it, then you'll have no trouble funding it. But hang on a minute. I was reminded of a video that I did not that long ago. How long ago was it? October 6th. Transgender World Cup swimming races scrapped after no one enters. Isn't that interesting? The third category was created and none of them wanted to show up and compete. Why is that? Why did these mediocre men not want to compete in the third category? I find it really weird that they, they only want to compete and beat women. It's very sus to me. Again, the solution. Men, women, Division X, Division They, Division Them, Division Zer, call it whatever you want. Just leave the women's sport alone. Again, if there is so much support for that division, you'll have no problem finding sponsors, finding memberships, finding fans. But the problem is there isn't any. It's just mediocre men wanting to beat up women. All right, mate, thanks very much for checking out the channel and this video. Follow me up there and do the things down there. Are we done? Yeah, we're done.